So, setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. Word. Take some time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I, I was not here before, but you know, series of things. Anyway, we're live. Nice. Hello, Kevin. Hello, I'm hello. Here. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation to another oh. you know, episode of this um, podcast that I just created to organize, you know, structure, let's say, communications with, you know, creative people that I admire for what they're doing, the job that they're doing. I would say the legacy, right, of what they're doing with the community or in the arts, anyway. So that. in your case, in your case, I really admire you, admire your work, because I think you're doing something really important for the community. Um, but I would like you to explain what is it that you do, what is your work when it comes to coaching. And I, I understand you're an actor and a singer too. You're a multidisciplinary yeah. artist as well, right? Tell me a little bit about it. Okay, so yeah, I do. Uh, so I have my, my practice that I developed that I call Creatorhood, uh, The Art of Living from Truth. And I, I teach workshops from that. Um, I have a course based on that. And uh, I do a lot of transformation work. I call it transformation work more so than coaching, although coaching is a part of it. Uh, but it's really a, a comprehensive, dynamic, you know, development and access of you. It's because uh, it brings, it, it shows you how to merge the idea of our, you know, consciousness and our spiritual capacity and, and this immense multidimensional framework of us into living practical everyday life. So your ability to kind of live more comprehensively, as I like to express it, or your your fullest authentic expression and so in that is spiritual guidance emotional uh, mastery knowing how to command attention and focus how to tap into um, to more capability in your body strengthen the connection relationship uh, development it kind of catches that whole framework of life and so then I, I guide from it I, I speak from it I teach from it and it something that I went on a personal journey with uh, accessing these insights for my journey and then over the past 10 been leading and teaching and uh, private sessions and speaking. And then, yeah, I also act uh, and write and uh, I songwrite and rap and play a few instruments and yeah, every, every skill set right. you got, I just want to put it out to the world. Yeah. Where can we, well, that's great, brother. Where can we see your artistic work and your uh, coaching or transformational work? So uh, the work I do right now, I do live, uh, a live course, and I'm getting ready to create an automated one, but people can connect with me. I share a lot of content on uh, my Instagram, at, which is at Source Radiance, uh, at, on YouTube, which uh, most of the content there is a little older, although it all still applies. And I'm finally building up a lot more content there and then um, getting ready to revamp my website. And then we have the Light Beings community, which is something I founded and actually work the group I started teaching and guiding my practice through. And, uh, and we have the light beings on Instagram website, lightbeingscommunity.org. And then, um, in terms of the acting work, I'm currently on a show called sisters on BET and that, uh, we finished season one about a couple months ago and, and now we're getting ready to go and shoot season two next month. And so it's, uh, it's exciting. Yeah. To get, yeah, to cool. get things. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very thankful for our common friend Mia, who is uh, Mio, who introduced, you know, all, uh, me to you. I mean, uh, you to me, um, because I think also what you both are doing is great. The work that you're doing in regards to, I, I think it's really important what you say. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you are okay for, um, uh, let's say, embracing. The divine and as well the divine energies that we you know come yep. from, right? Like, yep. Let's say feminine, uh, either feminine or masculine. And I think that's, I think that's apparently like a simple question, but it's not. It's really very fundamental for the times that we're living, for the challenges that we're living as human beings. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that? Where, where does that idea come from? How do you put that into practice? How do you, you know, put, came up with that? So in, in, in my practice of creatorhood, I, you know, I discovered a lot about the nature of how existence works. And that 
kind of led me into exploring these concepts of understanding masculine and feminine energy. And, and the way that I break it down is it's, it's what you just described, the divine energy or the sacred union of all life. And because everything has these qualities, right? This masculine and feminine energetic resonance that we all have within us. And, uh, and Mio and I, we both uh, guide and teach on it and we, we co-facilitate on it. And uh, she's awesome as well. And it's a really important thing to become aware of because it's something that's literally in everything. And as you really begin to understand the nature of masculine and feminine energy, which is uh, what I like to say, our creative and expressive force, our um, command and surrender force, our um, doing and, and being force, you really start to understand the nature of how things function, how we interact with each other. And it's not just the concept of, um, you know, male sex or female sex, it's, it's just an energy. And when you also begin to understand the qualities of each energy, you recognize why um, women's and bodies are, are, are the way they are, the way that relationship dynamics work, when we each have our feminine and masculine sides and being able to feel the emotions, yet also be able to um, take action and, and knowing how to use this beautiful rhythm of life that we all live with. And when you really get a handle on it, it just, that's really where the harmony of life functions from. It's really powerful, really, really powerful. And I also think it's really important because I think we're living kind of a crisis of the narrative of identity that we were mm -hmm. raised with. You know, the idea of what it's like being yeah. a woman, what it's like being a man, socially mm -hmm. speaking, culturally speaking, across the board, you know, yep. in different cultures. And I think in that sense, what you're doing is uh, relevant because it's a message that, you know, goes not only to the wellness community, but to anybody, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, like it... it it lands for everyone because it's it's something that, that we're navigating with and especially now in this day and age where we're becoming so much more aware and 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 tapped into the possibilities of more that really knowing how you function in an authentic way not what you have been told you ought to be or not what we think that we're obliged to to function with but to truly take time and to know yourself more and the nature of these qualities of energy uh, you know, especially doing men's work that I'm a part of and, and, uh, and lead with the sacred sons and also through life. And, um, and even, you know, doing some women's work and be invited into women's circles to offer insights. You see the important dynamic of really exploring what it means to be you and how valuable knowing the masculine and feminine aspects of you as an individual, and then how you play that out in a way that's way more healthy and aligned where, you know, us being taught early on as boys that feeling your emotions was wrong or a weakness or whatever. And now we're, we're recognizing not only is it um, not a weakness, it's vital to our health, our well-being, and our mind to feel our emotions. And, and that brings in a whole new conversation about what it means to be a man or a woman and, and um, or any gender because the energy is, you know, beyond that, but just mm -hmm. understanding the functions. Cause even in same sex relationships, you still end up flowing with the different energies back and forth. And this is a really intrinsic, sacredness of life in everything and it's vital and it's so relevant now because people are in a really interesting space with self-discovery and to really know that things that people play out that are qualities resonant of the energy itself and once you have a greater awareness of that how you can actually function and know more of yourself in a, in a more fluid way and knowing when there's times to be in your feminine times to be in your masculine and how to do the the interchange of that without judgment you know, how, do you how, do, how do you prepare for the work that you do? How do I prepare in terms of like, how do I get here? Or how do I prepare like before I drop no, it? On? How, do you, how do you learn what you know? Oh. How do you, you know, in order to be prepared to coach other people, to help other people with Yeah, their, for sure. Path. Well, my journey, my journey, you know, I started young. When I was young, I, I tapped into just these interesting insights that no one was really talking about at the time, you know, in the eighties when I was growing up and I just, it's just interesting things I was tapping into. I didn't think much of it. And as I, I got a little older in my teens and at 17 or 16, I was reading a few books. Like I read a conversation with God at 16 and I was like, this is cool. It's got like a lot of things thinking, you know, similar. And then I read Seth speaks, Seth speaks at 17. And that was the first time I'd ever seen anything that full comprehensive described things I was tapping into seeing, exploring, and that was kind of my first introduction of diving into whatever I was accessing. And as I continued to tap more into this and explore, more insights kept coming. And, and, and I just noticed my perspective started shifting and I started kind of testing these insights 
to see how they landed. And they just kept changing everything that I knew in my life. And the response that people were having, what are you doing? Because things are changing. I was functioning differently. And, and it was just an interesting space. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just tapping into stuff. And I, and I just started sharing with people the way I, I started seeing things in my perspective. And it started picking up. And um, but I went on this interesting journey between all these insights I was accessing that just felt like undeniable truth. And then this idea of who I thought I was and was supposed to be. And, and I, I kind of went through that conflict for a little bit. And then as it really started coming online, you know, 24, 25, 26, I started sharing a little bit more and, and, and then I kind of started becoming a guide and counselor for people, just offering insights. They would tell me things. And I, I always love, you know, really studying people and human behavior and, and seeing patterns and the way the world function that always intrigued me. So I just kept tapping into that within all these insights that were coming through. And then I, you know, I had a range of things in life between playing sports most of my life and being an artist, you know, musically and, uh, and then getting into acting. I just started noticing all these things that offered insights about the nature of energy, the mm. of okay. mindset, the nature right? of emotion. Yeah. It's like, and I started seeing all these correlations of it with this mm. insight that kept pouring out where I started having to put things in notebooks because it was so much. And then it just kept coming online and I finally kind of heard the call to just start a group once a week because a lot of people kept coming to me saying, I love talking to you about this stuff because I have no one else I can talk to. My friends think I'm crazy. My family thinks I'm crazy. And I just wanted to show them that you weren't crazy. You were tapping into something. And I happened to have insights that could support the journey. So I started having people meet once a month and we just tapped in. And that really started the process of, okay, I think there's something here to actually mold. And I just started this process of molding a step-by-step practice to show people these things I had experienced but hadn't fully broken down into practical and I spent you know a couple of years really formulating that and doing pilot programs on how the insight would land and structuring it and refining it and and then I just kind of catapulted into this space of speaking at engagements and teaching workshops and I just kind of started to mold that as I went but the the insights and the ability to kind of intuitively feel into and also notice the patterns of of behavior kind of just start taking off and then through word of mouth people started mentioning me and that's how I started getting clients and it and it, it was like an organic thing I didn't see this coming I didn't see this happening like this and it just kind that's of right, like man. took over <laughs> yeah it just literally took over and I was like, okay we're here now and I just felt this immense that's like humbling gratitude and power in in this because I know what it did for me and sharing with others I knew I had great. landed in, in that purpose space and that really kind of became the foundation and I just literally built it up from there that's yeah. awesome let yeah. me ask you something so in your practice what mm -hmm. are your let's say most common challenge that you have faced or you face in my advice what's the what's the biggest challenge or the most challenging thing uh I would say for me and then, and I see it kind of still land with others. It's, it's when, once you understand the nature of how emotions function, it kind of changes the game. Because one of my biggest moments, and, and there's a few of them, the one that really landed was when I was, I was really recognizing how I would build up this momentum in my life and I would hit these little spaces where everything would stop. And I was like, what's happening? that I, mm. I build things up and suddenly I just, I stop, I make different choices, the energy shifts. And I, I remember having this really massive revelation as I was sitting in the dark and just kind of processing and reflecting and all of these emotions came pouring up and it was like guilt and rage and all yeah, these things. Were I know. Like, yeah, and I was like, and I was like, oh, and I was bawling, <laughs> like sadness and anguish, I was bawling and I was like, what is this? And it. And it really <laughs> opened up this like floodgate and, and it was so powerful because it, it was like this really dope access to something that as I, as I let it flow, I noticed I started becoming in command of it and I had this freedom to kind of with the emotions. And I noticed that when it comes to this work and I guide others, it's the, it's the biggest key because everyone loves the idea of my practice when they're introduced to it, all the way up until it hits this edge of something they don't want to accept, mm. right? Emotionally, uh -huh. and then they're like, what the fuck that Kevin? Uh -huh. And it's like, right? And it's <laughs> like, so it's really these emotions that 
there's still this connotation that there's somehow you know positive and negative emotions and not just emotions that offer really important services of awareness and insight that when you know how to navigate them and identify them and process them, you really access the, the surging force of, of creation. And I think it's, it's one of the most powerful things because it guides everything. And, and really that's the piece that I find people that takes more dedication to get a handle on because your emotions are there and they're gonna be used and chosen and accessed and to know how to harness that and use the wisdom of that is something that's there. And then the other part I would say is full out commanding attention like really knowing how to um, harness, you know, the light of your conscious mind as transforming container of awareness and maintain it and develop that strong, you know, deep focus uh, that everyone has the capacity to harness and, but don't often practice because it's not often taught. So you hear, you know, narratives of like ADHD and ADD and people are like, I never can control my mind or thoughts. And it's just, it's not that your mind's more powerful, your ego's more powerful, or you have ADHD. It's you've never been taught how to flex the muscles of just commanding your presence and your attention. And once you know how to do that, all those other stories and, and diagnoses of something being wrong with your mind, if there isn't something actually physically off, you're, you realize that's all it was. Like you never flex certain muscles of knowing how to harness this creative energy, these, this emotional capacity and the ability to truly command your mind. And once those things are on, everything else starts to kind of like, like surrender to the nature of that as a side effect. And it's really powerful, but definitely one of the most uh, dedicated aspects of the practice to get a handle on. Cause even when you have, you know, like multidimensional experiences or deep, you know, in meditations or even psychedelics, people struggle with emotional context that can come up in those spaces that when you really know how to harness that, you'll never consider, like you'll never consider the concept of a bad day again because you'll just be so healthy with these aspects of you that when they show up, you're like, oh, what's up, Insecure Me? Thank you for showing up today. I love you so much. Thank you for letting me know where I can expand it more. Let's go put this to work. As opposed to being like, ah, this negative thing again, ruining my day. You know, you really, it changes the scope of life and it becomes a real thing authentically. Um, so those would be the, the probably the most difficult that people usually grasp. But when you do, it's the, it's the thing that changes the game. For sure. Brother, let me ask you, in your practice, why, I mean, have you find vulnerability being a challenge? Because me, in personal relationships, in everything in life, I find that one of the most difficult things that people um, don't know how to go about is with vulnerability. And you see that in all kinds of relationships, right? Mm -hmm. People, it's difficult for some people to be vulnerable because they think, for some people, they think it's a weakness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there's so much power in being vulnerable. I have learned that from you, me, and many others. Right? What mm -hmm. can you say about it? Yeah, you know, yeah, I exactly that. Our vulnerability is a source of our greatest strength because the way I define vulnerability is our ability to live uh, open, honest, expressive from the heart. Right? Living in an open, honest expression of self is vulnerability, and we often believe that when we're vulnerable, it exposes us to possible hurt or attack or pain. And it's, and that's the only the case when we struggle to accept ourselves fully. And I found that that's kind of the biggest fear with it. Now with me and the work I've done, I'm grateful that I've now been able to create a space where people understand that with me, I don't have a judgment about things you're doing. I just bring to awareness what's happening. So you know what to do. And so they really start to feel the safe space. So uh, people find that it's a little easier to be vulnerable with me because I don't have a bias. I just want to see you thrive and being able to have clients on all kinds of different ends of, you know, the spectrum of like being abused or abusing or, you know, being raped or raped and all these, all these concepts. It's like, I can truly hold accepting space of others to explore themselves, to be able to, you know, step up and change their lives and become something more impactful. Um, and, for anyone that's just living their life, it, it's a struggle, but I find the only reason we're ever afraid to be vulnerable is when there's things that we judge about ourselves that we don't want people to know that if we took time to face those things and honor them and, and acknowledge them, you take ownership of them. And therefore you no longer have the fear of being exposed or showing people this. And then the concept of vulnerability now fades from this idea of being in danger 
to this idea of being in full power, you know? And it's um, because we're, what I find is because we're so used to avoiding our emotions, right? As a society, we, we didn't, we don't, off, we don't teach emotional maturity or intelligence like at, at an early age to kids. We, we tell them, stop crying, suck it up, do it. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, here Be you a go. Man. Be a man. Yeah, right? Like, we, and so you, you witness the effects of that. What does that mean? I, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. that because of the pressure that I think that signifies, Absolutely. you know? Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes, you know, I'm a feminist because I believe in the quality both of women and men, but I really, it doesn't mean that I don't consider, you know, I, I can see how much pressure men have nowadays in society, right? Mm -hmm. it, ha it has to be difficult at best to be a man with all these societal pressures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, in a, in a way. and I feel yeah, and I feel like it's for you know it's it's for everyone in their in their own space and with the nature of what it meant to be man, especially with with the the way that things change because there are th certain things that are natural to life that we as a, a populace collectively didn't fully understand, and so we used to like like when you see a lot of misaligned aspects of masculine and feminine, we're so used to seeing it that we think that that's actually how it is. So when we see you know, aggression, we think that, oh, that's males being aggressive, but aggression is a natural thing in life. It's creative, it's, it's energy. But when you suppress aggression or suppress anger, it comes out distorted. It finds these ways out. And that's where violence comes from. And, you know, in mm -hmm. cultures of like dominance, like, you know, wanting to, to impose. And these, it's all this struggle of emotional energy, because once, once you know how to feel freely, you can utilize this energy in powerful ways. And so then you're no longer afraid to feel things. You're not afraid if people call you out or criticize you because you get to check in with yourself and what's being shown and know what's, what's yours to explore and what's, you know, their, their things to work through and you get to maintain your space and, um, and, you, and you know how to relate to people more. Like when you know how to really feel your emotions freely, that's universal. Everyone feels their emotions uh, or has emotions. And th those are ways that we can cross-culturally, cross-genderally, cross-sexuality relate to each other and and it's so powerful but we we've, we've been so avoidant and negligent of ourselves in so many ways that we feel like the standard of life is to hide shit you know like don't 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 show people everything i don't and, and we create a culture off of that and that leads to more resentment and bitterness and 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 uh, distortion because everyone's always looking to avoid things and they'll make the decisions to do that if they don't feel safe and significant within themselves. And so that's mm. what you see what happens when it comes to vulnerability, when if we lived more mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually healthy, no one would ever be afraid of, of having honest conversations or, or, or telling people how they honestly feel in, in a more responsible way or speaking up for themselves or saying no when it's time to say no or walking away or saying yes to things they really feel yes and not like lowering themselves and hoping they don't hurt somebody else they'll go well this is how i feel and if something comes up for you i'm here to talk to you about it you know and so that's the kind of thing that brings us to more healthy place where transparency becomes more of a value and principle rather than like hiding and keeping your guard up because you don't know how to fully take command of yourself yet and i feel like that's what makes vulnerability so powerful is to be your open honest expression of self is to be fully engaged with life and to live life fully. So you discover more about you. You experience way greater profound relationships. You, you have so much more to contribute and you're, and you just live a healthier life. That's way more enriched and fulfilling. And that's uh, the power of that. That's now becoming more apparent in everyone's awareness where the old way of doing things in relation to our emotions and self um, embodiment is kind of evolving now you know, with the movement of greater awareness. Thank yeah. you. Let me ask you, what about COVID-19? Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of a challenge is that for you, your practice, the way you look at the world, for us as citizens? How do you see things from now on? For me, you know, for me, nothing changes when it comes to this practice of creator because it's, it's, it's designed to live from the inside out. And you're always looking at all experiences as your, your reality creation that are offering you something. So we always, when you're con living in conscious creatorhood, we always see life as these opportunities and, and the way that things show up is like, okay, cool. This is where we're at with this information. What's coming up for me, anything, no repeats or something's coming up. It's like, cool, let me address that. And then what do I do with this information? And now that we're here, 
it's like I just adjusted. Clients went from in-person to online. Events went from in-person to online. And I got a chance to start working on more of my content and uh, start growing crops, uh, neighbors and stuff. People started looking out for each other in ways that we could support each other. And on my end, it just, things flourished even more. Um, but my life is designed like that. Like I got to the place where I'm in full command of my life. I, I don't work for anybody. I work for myself and I do, I make my own schedule, do my own things. And then everything else, like with the acting world, you know, we were going to, um, we had to postpone, you know, the next shoot dates a little bit and move that back. And, and, you know, the entertainment world's kind of figuring out what to do from here in this mm -hmm. space. Um, and when it comes to health, for me, it's because, you know, there's so much information going around and, and conspiracy theorists things, so much. Things, right? <laughs> there's so much. And it's, and a lot of it's funny because to me, like, you know, the things that governments do, those things aren't secrets. Like the government does all kinds of things, but that doesn't change that you still are in command of your life when you become more self-aware and owning, owning your sovereignty. So you just go, okay, with this, what do I do? And, and my standards for health are, are always there. So I'm always constantly keeping an eye, eye on that, but that all starts from the inside out still. And so with COVID, it was just, it was, to me, it was an interesting experience to watch the world play certain things out and then kind of offer insights and support. Um, and then looking at the landscape of society and what we would do from here, because there's so many things on, on the table. And then when people start talking about mandatory vaccinations and it's like, you know, if people mm. actually lived in a more aligned space with themselves, you wouldn't even have to be vaccinated. It's like, you, you know, and that's, and, and to and to explore life from a, a greater standard, and I always talk about standards, it's like once you start set greater standards for your life, you're always looking to do the things that, that support you and contribute to the world the best, you know, to the best of your ability. And that's what these experiences offer us is a chance to step forward. And what I found what was really interesting with the experience as a whole is that once the quarantine thing kind of came about, all the escapes and avoidances people would use to not deal with their stuff were gone and people had to start uh -huh. dealing with the shit and all of a sudden <laughs> you know like domestic violence and child abuse these things went up because all these things are happening and couples are struggling with each other now because they don't have those spaces to get away and yeah. uh, to me to me i think it's so important and it's like you don't want to see people go through really painful experiences yeah but, well, but you, right but you also know the importance we need the of reality that. check we need the reality exactly check. Exactly. And that's so important. It's like, like things have to be brought to the surface to be addressed. If you don't, if you, if you're not aware of them, you don't, you don't change them. And, and so that's the, that's part of it. And sometimes change is painful and facing our shit can feel painful at times or discomfort, uncomfortable. And so I feel like yeah. it offered a lot of that and it brought people to a lot of greater space and checking with themselves like, man, what have I been doing with my life where in this situation, I feel like I'm at the whim of it rather than in more command that when these things happen, it's like, okay, I can, I know what to do to handle things. And I feel like this also brought a lot of that to people's awareness. Like, I don't want to be working for a job that when something like this happens, all of a sudden, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the next month or not. And that is that a couple of friends who saw that and they were like, I have some things to change in my life because I don't want to be stuck in this position again. And that was dope too. So it's yeah. like one of those, one of those reality checks in a lot of ways. I think it's so powerful. And last question that I have seen, I have, I mean, I have read, listened to some videos, some of your videos about the last, you know, challenges that we are, you know, facing as society Absolutely. when it comes to Black Matter. And I, I really think you have a lot to say, and it's really, they're really helpful, your videos. And I would like for you to please share a little bit of what is your perspective? How do you incorporate, you know, your ideas about being black or you know mm -hmm. being a, a belonging to a black community or feeling black or because I, I understand being black is a feeling too you no know? it's not only a race it's not only um, a genre it's not only you know it's something more complex you know I can see that with my son that one day he was like mom I'm, I'm black And he said it. I know he is because, you know, of his features, but he made the decision. And I understood that for him it was important. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was kind of like, wow, this is interesting because I didn't, I didn't know about that level of awareness, you know, about yeah. what it's like being black. And I, I embrace it. I understand it. But I think it's important to have these conversations that we're having these days. What do you think? 100%. Yeah, I think this is the really the coolest thing about what's happening this year is exactly this it's 
these are things that that have been here, you know, for a long time that have, and, and, you know, the work when it comes to doing work of transformation, work, healing and growing in life, you have to know how to face your shadows. You have to know how to face the distortions that you've experienced. And um, I have conversations constantly in several different communities. Um, and and even with the black community, it's, it's knowing when you're navigating life in a situation where the system has been built a certain way. Uh, you know, everything is still reality creation, but we, we have to look at, at a lot of important things where to me, it's always about two really important things for your own life, sovereignty and standards. So in your own sovereignty, you have to know your own autonomy, right? Your ability to think and choose for yourself and mm -hmm. your, your ownership of self, which is being responsible and accountable. And, and then you have the other side of it, which is standards, right? Like standards of living. And we all have, you know, shadows, which are things that we've never addressed at some point that come up to be addressed when we want to grow and expand and be in more love. And yeah. nations are like that, you know, nations like that. And there's tons of shadow in America when you think about how America, United States were, was built. And, and so there's a lot of conversations we have. And for me, it's about knowing how to acknowledge the journey of this country, how to face the facts of things that took place here. Mm -hmm. how to own that and know that we don't have to live by the suffering of it, but you do have to know how to acknowledge it so that we can create a different narrative. And it's something that everyone must be involved in. And, and it's an interesting journey because I've, I've gone through a lot of these experiences. And, and now I, I would say it from the language of creatorhood where I've created these experiences for myself, where I've, I've been in situations of being, you know, brutalized with cops and racial racially profiled and all those things growing up and i've navigated that space of anger and rage and now that i'm in the space i'm in i'm in a far greater capacity of awareness to look at it from a different angle that that shows the whole scope of the game and yeah. so what we're looking at right now are two really important dynamics one is breaking the pattern of what we've been experiencing and that's what things like protests and the rage that comes up when we see things like with what happened to George Floyd and the ongoing reflections of that distorted system, right? Mm -hmm. That plays out. And so you, you rise to take, to take a stand that's called setting a boundary, right? Like enough is enough. We've had it. Now what's happened in the past though, is like you set a boundary, but there's no clear image on what the next standard looks like to live. So nothing mm -hmm. changes after that. And then just goes back through and, and so we're looking to step forward really as a species of, of, of the earth as, as humans to know that to just let things slide is not the standard anymore. Like the standard is speak up and hold people accountable. The standard is take more responsibility for your life and show up greater. The standard is be more considerate of other people because we're all in this together. We are all forging something here. And it's important to acknowledge that everyone matters and deserves to, to live a life of full equal opportunity to make something of themselves with it. Now, that's always going to be the case in life. Um, even when you start from, say, a, a, a more a disadvantageous position. Mm -hmm. But when you realize as a people that you have way more power than you think you do if you come together and you're willing to have open, honest conversations in life. And I feel like with the Black Lives Matter movement, it's, it's raising the awareness of these important questions where it's like the, the history of this country is not a secret. And the fact that it's not something you want to acknowledge or have a conversation about speaks to why patterns continue. And even of though course. things- right? Avoid them. Exactly. Avoid them. It's another sign of avoidance and neglects. That things got to be addressed. You got to be able to face it. You got to have the hard conversations. You got to be able to hold people accountable because that goes back to standards too. It's like when you see, you know, police force where there's clear clear distortions and misalignments in behavior and they have like track records of things and other people who are quality people aren't holding them accountable you know what i mean like these things all raise flags that that's got to be addressed and i think a lot of the times in the journey of life we were so you know for generations we're so over kind of the political system and all these things and that we weren't being fully engaged in it all and so when you're not fully engaged and paying attention and speaking up and, and like, like setting a, a standard, things just play out. And so like nothing changes in systems that don't get addressed. And now it's finally kind of hit that head that I think, I feel like the whole setup was perfect between, between 
the quarantine and everyone now having stuff I know. Come up. and I then know. this like, coming right on it was like it was like a perfect storm to it's bring great. it's like yeah it's a divine order in place 100 percent 100 percent you know what i mean 100 percent yeah things so that were bubbling bubbling up things are now there we can see exactly. the wounds what are we gonna exactly. do with those wounds do you exactly. think we need to heal them can you can we all help to cure them to you know heal them to get them better do we all are we all responsible exactly but i think you know it's not about all feeling this. guilty or not feeling guilty or feeling because you're why now oh my god i have to be politically correct and every time that i see a black person i have to say oh man i'm sorry no i right. don't think it's the case. it's just address what is it that we as individuals can do to make it better for all of us exactly how can we treat each other better how can exactly. we acknowledge other people even though they are different exactly they come from I mean, another place people that we don't have the same accent mm -hmm. migrants because this is happening with black matters but it's, I, I can't apply all this to migrants how migrants are treated especially right. illegal Ill illegal migrants exactly exactly and, and, and that can be point. applied to women too to the female voice and that can be applied to the community the, the yeah because the, the the things that created it all and i always tell people you know i i i constantly hit home on this because it's really important it the the issue isn't racism racism is a side effect of what the actual issue is like racism you just said racism classism sexism national anything that's a device measure is an actual side effect of the of the real cause and the real cause is what's underneath all of the narratives that these things are playing out. Because even when you think about the way the country was built, it's like you have you have a, 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 an aspect of humanity that already exists here. Another aspect of, of humanity that comes over from another place to escape the way they felt oppressed on that side, right? Exactly. But, they don't, but they never addressed the things that they felt inside in relation to feeling oppressed. And they came over here and did the same shit here to somebody else that than they did over there. Exactly. And so then, and then you bring over another aspect of the human, human populace to then work and you create all these concepts of somehow there are human beings that are better, superior or less superior I than others. That's what I right. see underneath everything. Some people exactly. believe they're destined and they right. can do whatever they want, but other people, oh, sorry, not exactly. your turn. No, this is my exactly. turn. This is my life. I'm living now. Right. And, and so we have full build. capacity uh, uh, human beings. Why not developing all our capacities in this life? That's the one that we know. Exactly. Exactly. And it's and so possible. You're, you're I think it's that. achievable. Say it again. I think it's achievable. I think it's possible. It absolutely, it's, it's beyond achievable. It's 100%. It will take time, but it's beyond achievable. We can do it. But it, it, it's a different approach that's got to be had at this point where you don't let up. Like you don't let up the stance of the boundary, but you must start establishing a new standard. And I see that's happening now because, I mean, look at the diversity of everyone coming together for this now in a way that hasn't been before. Yeah. And that's the key. And now you have more people wanting to be a part of the conversation and you're seeing more, you know, like, like the white population of America being like, you know, how do we have these conversations? What, how do we navigate this? And that's the key. It's like, start having the conversation, start asking the questions to explore why people feel the way they feel and how to navigate it. Because for me, I'm always showing people how to acknowledge where they felt like a victim and then how to shift that into something more. Because you're, you're, you want to know that you can live a life where you're in full command and responsible for yourself. You stop blaming things for your situation and you choose to mm. build from it. And that's what happens when you have a movement like this, where it's like, you know what, I'm not going to complain about my situation anymore. I'm going to take a stand and, and be a part of the impact that evolves it. And that's what this movement is about. And what's important is the, the other part is being able to have a conversation comprehensively, knowing that just because you're currently focusing on one thing, it doesn't take away from something else. So like when people say black lives matter, and then people say all lives matter, right? And then that's that whole narrative. It's like, you know, to acknowledge an aspect of humanity that has clearly experienced distortion and misalignment in the way it's been addressed mm -hmm. and treated in the country, mm -hmm. along with other aspects of humanity that are people of color too, with the Native Americans, right, and Latin community. And, and, and you see the narrative 
acknowledging the fact that they matter because they exist like you exist and they have something to offer like you have something to offer does not mean you don't. And being exactly. able to have that conversation and say, I get it, but that's but that reveals something really important about the nature of humanity. And that's the thing that drives us in everything we do is safety and significance. Everyone wants to feel safe and significant. And when you do, your approach to life is different. You're more vulnerable. You want to have the different conversations. You always want to be more generous. But when you don't feel safe and significant, you're always looking for ways to get it. And so Absolutely. when people think that something else is a focus and they don't feel secure in themselves, they go, oh, no, but what about me? And it's like, dude, this isn't about you right now, but no one's speaking less of you. But there's something that's got to be addressed that you also know is an issue, but it also brings up stuff for you so you don't know how to address it. And now we're in this space where this day and age, we're ready to start having these conversations and ready to take a stand. And finally, along with that, understanding that in order for these things to change, we all can no longer allow ourselves to avoid facing and, and engaging in e economics and the, po the political system and more sociology and more, you know, like, and more interaction and, and, and having these conversations. And now that aspect and what I talk a lot about is, is both. It's understanding the level of sovereignty and standard within you and then how to live that outside of you on a daily basis. And so how do you take setting the boundary and make it a standard? Because a standard is how it becomes a way of life, right? A boundary just breaks the pattern initially. And both are vital if we're going to see this country and other countries that go through similar things and the world become that more you know, expansive space where people go, I will no longer stand to the side and feel like I don't have a voice or I don't have impact. I'm going to step in this and I'm going to keep discovering more about myself and make sure that my impact is had that reflects the new standard we want to see in the world. And that's the one thing that's been missing the most that I feel like is starting to come online, but now it's a different territory. So keeping that energy up is a different game. And that's where we want to keep getting people to. And that's why have, continuing to have the conversations is really important. And at some point it has to shift from the, the victim mentality of just like say surviving in a place and say, this is how we all thrive together, but it's going to take us all to do it. Like there's no way around that. It's like, it's everyone that now lives in America and is born in America, especially you're American, regardless of your, you know, so you can be black American, right? but it's not African American at this point. It's, it's like, you're American. There's white American, Latino American, black American, like you're, you know, like Asian American, you're American born here. And now that's the range of the, of the country. It's a beauty. So the it's beauty of this country has been always that it's composed by people from all over. Exactly. You just have forgotten exactly. that. Mm -hmm. We think that we just celebrated diversity, but the unequal diversity. And oh, we have to find ways in which we are more balanced. Exactly. We all feel people, I think. Exactly. The value. And, and I, I was going to ask you, on, I said the last question, but I think this uh, topic is really relevant. The topic of value, the human value, the value okay. of each individual. Yes. Now, that's something that I think also is important to work on because if we don't feel that we have a value, we cannot operate from a good place. I don't know. That's my idea. What, what do you, what, what can you say? Oh yeah. You, you, it's a part of what I, what I teach in, in the section of, um, of sovereignty and standards is how to, how to live by a set of values and a set of principles. And when you're able to actually be clear on the, on the values you stand for and the principles that govern your life, that's universal. And now you have a, an unwavering framework that automatically sets a greater standard because it goes from the inside out as opposed to being like, well, I value whatever I can get outside of me. You go, well, this is what I stand for. So like, even in my practice that I, that's for me personally, but everyone that you know goes through the practice starts to understand the nature of them. We have 10 core values that we reference to as qualities we want to embody. And then 10 principles that are like the representation of our choices. And to give you an example of some of them, so our principles are um, know thyself. That means you're always looking at the chance to discover more and humble yourself enough to know there's always more to discover. Hmm. Um, own thy power, the fact that you are the power, right? Live from the heart, honor the connection, which means the connection to all life. So you value creating stronger connections more, more than just being right or wanting to prove a point. Living intentionally, listening to the body, following your intuition, owning your sovereignty, internal cause, external effect, and being driven by love and greater purpose. So those are the principles that we base our choices from. And then our values are 
honesty, integrity, precision, authenticity, accountability, uh, and then generosity. And we have res uh, res resilience, uh, responsiveness, purpose, growth, and liberation. And those, those are the things right. that are my foundation, right? How I function. Right. And it's when you're that clear, it's a whole different ball game. Cause now I approach everything in my life from that space, my businesses, my relationships, you know, the dynamics, the earth people, and that's a huge key. So being able to take the time to go, okay, what is it that I stand for? What are my values and what are my principles? So I know how to hold myself accountable. I know whether I'm in integrity or not. If you don't have those, you have no idea whether you're, you're progressing or, or like falling down. You have no idea where you're at and you're just going in circles. And when you have mm. that strong of a foundation, then you know how to show up for, for people in a greater standard. You know how to hold people accountable. You know how to be responsible and how to check yourself or receive the check or criticism when you're out of integrity, because that's also something that will show you like, oh, wait, oh, I'm not living by my, my values right now, you know, and you get to check in with that. And so it's, to me, it's not negotiable. If we're going to build something greater and if, and, and everyone I've ever known, everyone that I've ever done work with that didn't have them before that have them now, their life drastically changed when they had that. When you had values and principles, every business that functions in the greatest capacity is very clear on their principles and values and all the best relationships too. Once, once I've had couples who are like all over the place and they start molding a set of values and principles, they mm. now have a way to like gauge and, and explore and support each other and hold each other accountable. It's a different game. And that's, that's a standard that's necessary that we have to build upon from where we're at. And people are starting to recognize that when they're starting with like, okay, here's one value, everybody matters. And so we're going to acknowledge that this populace, this area that people of color in this country that haven't been acknowledged as, as full equality beings on this country will now be acknowledged so that we can actually live in this space that all lives matter because everyone is now experiencing the same opportunities and the same treatment because we've set a new standard. And that, and knowing the values that govern that is huge. And I think that now that so many people now in every diverse nature of America and across the world are willing to have these conversations and they're all realizing like, oh no, there's no way for me to be silent anymore and to think that's okay. Like, it's like, you know, and now we're online for it. And I feel like that's, that's what's been so amazing about this year is more people yeah. are willing to go in than ever before. And that's what it takes, you know? And so- Thank it's, you so much, brother. Thank My you so honor. much for this beautiful conversation. I knew it was going to be like that. <laughs> it's an honor. Thank you it's for the pleasure. work that you do too, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. My pleasure. Take care, okay? Good luck with everything. Same to Ciao. you. Keep thriving. Ciao. Ciao.